I'll say that I, I'm sold out for the Lord. I've given my life to the Lord. But the days are coming and they are already here. Huh? When those words are going to be put into action. Come on. So we have to mean what we say. All right. Because I look around this world right now and things are getting out of control. I call some brothers that I haven't seen in a while. Because in the last couple of years, I think we've all seen that things can be taken from us. Yes. They can take things from us. The mm -hmm. world will take things from you. But they can't take Jesus. They, they, they closed the doors of some churches, but we still had Jesus. See, that's why it's important to learn how to let go. Because they can't take something you already put down. All right. It's already, you, you already gave it to me. So I hear from my friends and I say, where have you been? I haven't seen you in a while. When are you coming back to church? And they tell me, well, I'll be back to church and I'll be back to the men's groups when things get back. Annoying. I'm telling you right now, every time I hear this, I, my wife gave me this shirt about a year ago, and it says this. It says, normal isn't coming back. Jesus is. And that's what I tell you. You can wait for normal. I don't even know what that means. So the process of letting go, Jesus is the teacher. He teaches us how to love. He teaches us how to let go, and he shows us first. So I just want to go through a couple of examples of where Jesus showed us how to let go. What did Jesus let go of first? He let go of his heavenly home to come down here and walk on the earth. Right? He let go of his heavenly form. Right. And he took on the form of man. Why? So that you we can relate can. to him and we can relate to him. Yeah. And he can relate to us. That's why he took on that form. What else did he give up? He gave up his heavenly position. Wow. Yes. He gave up that position to become what? A servant. Matthew right. 20, 28. It says this right here. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, All right. but to serve. Yeah. So he gave up his heavenly position to become a servant for us. And finally, and most of all, he gave up his life. Oh, yeah. He gave up his life so that we could have life. So he knows all about letting go. He has shown us all about how to let go. But he doesn't just show us. He expects that of us. Every one of his disciples that he called. He told them two words, follow me. <laughs> Whether it was Andrew, Peter, John, All James, right. these were fishermen. They had been out fishing. Yeah. When they came to shore, they had no fish. Right. He said, go back out and throw that net again. Uh -huh. yeah. All right. I said, All right. They went back out reluctantly, as we sometimes do. Yeah. They threw the net. And filled it to capacity. Ooh, so. When they came back to the shore, Jesus said, Now, <laughs> follow me. All right. Watch this. In Luke 5 11, it says, When they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. Oh, they left the boats and the nets. Filled. Those nets were just filled and they dropped them and followed him. They learned how to let go. Now, some people might say, Yeah, but they were just fishermen. I mean, I own a business, man. You know what I mean? I, I'm running a business. I'm in control of stuff. How am I going to let things go? Let's talk about a young man named Matthew. Matthew might not have been a popular man, but he had stuff. All right. He had things. All right. He had wealth. Yeah. He had a name. Yeah. Yeah. And it says in Matthew, in Luke, sorry, in Luke 5, 28, and he left everything behind yeah. and got up yeah. and began to follow him. Amen. Let him go. Yeah. See, he had actually something to let yeah. go of and walk away from. Oh, and it says immediately, and Mark, it says the word immediately. I like the word. He got up yeah. and followed him. He had a yeah. regal lifestyle and many possessions. Right. And immediately, yes, he got up and followed oh, Jesus. Yeah. So that brings me to my next man. This man right here, Jesus didn't come to him. He came to Jesus. You can find this story in Matthew 19, 16. It's the story of the rich, young ruler. Wow. Wow. That's what they called him. And he came up to Jesus and asked this simple question. What must I do to obtain eternal life? Now watch this. He was a rich, young ruler. He had wealth. He had youth. He had power. If you ask somebody today, I'm going to grant you one wish. What do you want? They're going to say one of three things. I want to be rich. Wealth. I want to live forever. Youth. I want to be in control. Power. This young man already had all those things. But even he knew there has to be something else. There has to be.
to be something else. Now watch, he came and asked Jesus, what must I do to obtain? Mm -hmm. Jesus tells him what he must do to maintain. Ah, what you say? Right? He does, watch what he answered. He says, I'll tell you what you shouldn't do. Here's what you shouldn't do. Don't steal. Don't commit adultery. All right. Do not take, uh, do not dishonor or honor your mother and your father. Love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. All right. right? He tells him all the things that he needs to do. So he tells him how to maintain, not to obtain. And the man gets excited. The young man says, I have done all these things. This is great. But what am I lacking? And so now Jesus tells him in, in Matthew uh, 19, 21 and 22, Jesus says this. Now listen, if you want to be complete, sell all yeah. of your possessions. Yeah. Give the proceeds to all the right. poor. Then you will have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. Now notice everybody else, he just said, follow me. Follow me. But he knew this man had stuff. And the young man said this. He walked away with his head down. He walked away with his head down. You know why? It says like this. But when the young man heard this, he went away grieving. For he was one who owned much property. Notice. Yeah. That to be complete. All right. He didn't say go buy something. Mm -hmm. See, we I know people, man, if I just had this, mm -hmm. oh, if I only had that car, mm -hmm. if I only had that house, if I only had that wife, mm -hmm. then I would be complete. Now Jesus says, if you want to be complete, go sell everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But watch this. You can sell everything and you still have money. He said, you, now wait a minute, don't just sell it. Now take the proceeds and give those proceeds oh, to yeah. the poor. Right. Then you will have real treasure. Uh -huh. yeah. Real treasure. Yeah. And then come and follow me. But the man walked away with his head down. You know why? Because sometimes the things that we own actually own us. Oh, yeah. and he, yeah. he wasn't willing to walk away. Yeah. He didn't know how to let go. Woo! Yeah. And it was sad. And let me tell you, let me just make you think of this really fast. Right. Who is truly a richer man? Mm. A man who has acquired many things, All right. or a man who requires wow. few. That's right. See, there's where your richness comes in. Come it's not in what you have, right. it's in who you have. Right. 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 That's what makes us rich. Amen. Matthew 6 33. See, I used to got I used to have understood this passage. In Matthew, Matthew 6 33, it says this. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. All right. And all these things will be added right. to you. Now I used to hear that before I started really studying this word. And I'd hear it and go, So if I seek Jesus first, then he's gonna give me a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> this is perfect. I felt like the rich young ruler. I'm already doing that. <laughs> but now I know what it is. At least I think that, Lord, you know, I know you're going to open my eyes to this. Here's what I think it really meant. He said this. If you seek me first, you already have everything. Right. 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 Come on. So when I add all these things to you, when something is added to you, that's just extra. You don't need it. It's just extra. That's the blessing that the Lord rains down because you already have the one thing that you need. So many, so as I'm going through and I'm, I'm studying this word, I realize so many of what Jesus teaches us, his teachings, are about letting go. Right. Now, I'm not going to name all of them because these little guys talk too, but I'm going to name a few. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is all about letting go. You got to let go of anger, hatred, resentment. If you're the one that needs forgiveness, guilt, shame, forgiveness is about letting go. Oh, right. yes, redemption is about letting go. Yeah. Who knew? See, redemption is when you let go of the idea that you can yeah. save yourself. You can. Right. That's what redemption is. It's already been done. Yeah. Yeah. So let go of that idea that you can do it. Yeah. You just have to receive it. Mm -hmm. Repentance mm -hmm. is about letting go. Uh, repentance is about letting go of your sinful lifestyle. Uh, yeah. But it's not just about letting go, it's about stopping. It's about letting go of the direction that your life is heading and stopping, uh, turning, yeah, heading yeah. away from your sin and towards your father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Repentance is about letting yeah. go. Sacrifice is about letting go. Right. Sacrifice is saying, I don't worry about me anymore. I'm willing to lay down my life. <laughs> 
for somebody else. That's why we love the army. That's why we love policemen. That's why we love people who are willing to sacrifice because they've let go of everything so that we can have it. Even to lay their lives down for another human. But God says that's a high form of love. Last one. Serving is about letting go. Serving is about letting go of the most valuable thing that we have. Time. Time is the most valuable thing that we own. Right. Right. And when you serve, you say, I'm willing to give up my time to help yeah. my brother and my sister. Yeah. I'm ready. Now, after serving for as long as I have, I've come to realize this. If you give up and let go of your time for the Lord, he will always give it back to you. Yeah. He will always, and in a way that you never expected it. Mm. So he didn't just talk about it. He didn't just show us. But I want to give you just a quick illustration. I'm closing with this, I promise. <laughs> quick illustration, just to show you from the beginning right. of Jesus' life and to the end of his life in the flesh. He never owned anything. Woo! Yeah, yeah. Watch this. Jesus was born in a borrowed barn. Yeah. Jesus preached from a borrowed boat. Yeah. Jesus fed thousands with a borrowed meal. Come on, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a borrowed donkey. Come on, he ate his last meal in a borrowed room. Hey. And he was buried in a borrowed tomb. Hey. You see that? You see? Let him know. The only thing he held on to was the will of his father. And he didn't own any of things, or as my son Jackson likes to say, or did he? Or did he what? See, if the innkeeper wouldn't have let go of that barn, it would not have become a delivery room. And possibly the most well-known barn on the face of the planet. Oh, yeah. If the disciples wouldn't have let go of the boat, yeah. it wouldn't have become a pulpit. Yeah. Uh, uh, the master of the universe came to preach from that boat. Yeah. If that young man would not have let go of that meal, it would not have become a miracle. Uh -huh. But it did. Uh -huh. If that donkey wasn't left for Jesus, he would have never rode it in to Jerusalem and it became a throne. The first time he allowed them to call him king was when he rode that donkey into Jerusalem. Uh, uh, uh. Right? If the man who owned that upper room wouldn't have let it go, it wouldn't have become a classroom where Jesus taught his final lesson. Yes. His lesson. And if Joseph wouldn't have let go of that tomb, it wouldn't have become empty. And that's the greatest miracle of all. Psalm 23 says this. It begins this way. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. How many of y'all know that it is not normal for sheep to lie down in green pastures? Right. Yeah. See, they see the green pastures. That's where they go to eat. They're ready to eat. But you know why they lie down in green pastures? Because <coughs> they have the shepherd. And the only time you lie down is when you're full. And they have everything they need. So they lie down in that green pasture because they were full. My prayer for everybody here today yeah. at this prayer bowl is that we all learn how to let go. Oh, let the Lord. And, and Jim Elliott said this, for he is not a fool who will give up that which he cannot keep in order to gain that which he cannot lose. Amen. Amen.